Hi friends, welcome back to the Lagan Lodge. Ranger Jason Bentley coming at you, sharing more ideas about summer camp lessons from Lagan. Right now I'd like to talk about tree and leaf identification. You can download our Lagan Outdoor Center dichotomous key. What's a dichotomous key? Well, that's how you play detective to figure out how what that tree is by using its clues. All trees have clues. You're gonna learn some vocabulary. What does it mean? What does a leaf mean to be simple or compound, alternate or opposite, uh, serrated or smooth or entire? There's a lot of different vocabulary for identifying trees. You might not be familiar with it, but if you follow the link and download the page, all that descriptive, all the descriptions are there and the vocabulary is there. You're also going to see uh, on there, you're going to share some places where you can get some books to help you identify these trees. There's lots of different books out there uh, to help you identify the trees. Uh, and I'm also going to share something on there that is one plant that you definitely want to learn how to identify, and that's poison ivy. When I'm out here at Lagan, that's one of the first thing I try to share with, with students is how to identify poison ivy. Sometimes it's easy to identify, like right now in the summer, very easy to identify. In winter time, it's a little bit more tricky because all the leaves drop and fall. Follow along and let's see if we can identify some trees out there in the woods. Hey guys, we found some poison ivy here growing up this cottonwood tree, and there's another vine growing right next to it that's harmless. It's called Virginia creeper. So I'm gonna show you a couple of characteristics and how to determine poison ivy from Virginia creeper. And uh, this is a perfect example of it. So two plants growing here, and these are both in the vine form. Poison ivy can grow as a singular plant low to the ground, or it can run up a tree uh, as a vine, just like Virginia creeper, or, or just like uh, a grape, wild grapevine. Uh, many vines out here in the woods. Um, so the two that we have, this is poison ivy, and we've all heard that old saying, leaves of three, let it be. Well, I'm here to tell you folks, there's lots of plants out here in the woods that have three leaves on it that look very similar to this shiny poison ivy. And depending on what time of season of the year it is, is what this poison ivy will look like. Sometimes it's a very brightish reddish purple in the fall. In the midsummer, as we have here, it's usually a bright, shiny green leaf. Dark green, real shiny, has three leaves on it. And if you zoom in here real close, you can almost see a mitten. Sometimes they have a mitten shape on one side on the edge and then the leaves in the center have three lobes as you can see on here also this poison ivy leaf has three lobes but the ones on the sides almost look like a mitten right side and a left sided mitten on here so those are poison ivy right next to it is this virginia creeper this is a harmless vine it won't hurt you it's real pretty too in the fall. It gets a really bright red uh, before the leaves drop off for the season. But right next to that, that's poison ivy right there. We don't want to touch that. That'll give us a rash. The oils from that plant get in contact with our skin can cause a rash. Some people aren't react, don't have reactions to it whatsoever. They can touch it and not be bothered by it. And other folks could just walk close by in the area, not even have to touch it, and they are very susceptible to it. So you never know what your reactions are gonna be unless you've got it before. But <clears throat> Virginia Creeper, as you can see, has five leaves. Let's get a really good example of them. You know, there's a couple of different ones here, different colors, but Virginia Creeper has five leaves growing around it. But if we eliminate two, Look how similar that is to poison ivy. So unless you're really, I mean, it doesn't look exactly the same, but if this happened to drop two leaves off and you'd say, oh, leaves of three, let it be, that must be poison ivy. Well, no, that's not the case. But you can get a poison ivy rash from the oils from the leaf. You can get the oil off of the bark. If you cut into it with a saw and you get some sawdust on you, you can get oil on your skin that way. You can even inhale the smoke, poison ivy. If you take a bunch of poison ivy brush and throw it into a brush pile, like if you're clearing land and you burn it 
and you inhale that smoke, you can also get that in your respiratory system, which can be very severe. So be careful what you're burning and if you're having campfires this summer uh, with moms and dads, aunts and uncles, grandpas, whoever, make sure they're not burning up poison ivy. So if they're clearing brush and you're helping this summer, keep your eyes open for the poison ivy. Make sure you let your folks know, don't burn that you know, in the fire. All right, we're gonna move on and see what else we can find here, guys. We're gonna stop here and look at a couple of uh, pine trees. Uh, one of our activities that we talked about doing was uh, tree and leaf identification. So I'm gonna get you started. Shared the links with uh, different tree books and IDs and our, our key that you can get off of Lagan and learn how to ID trees. Uh, but I'm gonna start you off with just a couple of easy characteristics um, to identify trees. Sometimes you can learn how to identify trees uh, just from a, some very simple characteristics without a, a, a book or a guide or anything. You can just, if you can remember it, memorize it. Easy characteristics. So we have a white pine right here. Right behind me is a white pine. There's a bunch of trees along here, but this is a white pine. It's our state tree, okay? And the characteristics of a white pine, which helped me to identify it, is simple. Let's start with the needles. Pine trees are evergreen, right? They have needles on them year round, so you should always be able to, if you can reach them, find the needles to the white pine. And uh, the, they do shed the needles off though, believe it or not. They don't keep the same needles year round. They're like any other plant. They will shed their, their leaf off and grow new ones. But without getting too in depth on that, let's pull a cluster of needles out and all these little needles do not grow out of individual spots on pine trees they grow out of what's called clusters and if you can see if you could pretend that those are like hair follicles like a hair growing out of your head if you could pretend that those are hair follicles and you run down to the base of that, they all grow out of one little spot. That's the cluster, okay? And they all come out of that, like, like a bunch of hairs growing out of one spot, okay? So on our white pine, and you have to pull a couple because it's nature and they're not all exactly the same. Sometimes they, just like hair falls out of our head once in a while, Pine trees will lose a needle out of a cluster once in a while too. So I usually get two or three to compare to make sure that I am comparing the same thing. That old saying, compare apples to apples, right? I'm gonna compare pine needle clusters to pine needle clusters. All right, I'm gonna count them up and see how many are in a cluster. And I can see that, I don't know if you guys can see them, but there's one, two, three, four, five clusters or five needles I'm sorry five needles that grow from one cluster these are all growing out of the same point here okay and there's five of them and white pine the word white has five letters in it w h i t e five it's the only pine tree here that we have five needles on there's a lot of other ones that have two okay that have long needles, short needles, all that sort of thing. Doesn't matter, on a white pine, this is the only pine tree that has five needles. So if you can get a couple of clusters and count them up, the first one I started with only had four on it. And I knew that couldn't be right, because it doesn't have four, it has five. It was just missing one, one fell out. That's why I said, get a couple to compare. So I grabbed another cluster and counted five needles. W-H-I-T-E, white, white pine. That's the easiest way to remember. There's a lot of other characteristics that you can look at, like the pine cones. White pine have a banana-shaped pine cone. It's long, thin, linear, banana-shaped. Um, red pines have smaller, round pine cones, kind of golf ball-sized, all right? Very different in shapes. Other characteristics, the bark. The bark looks different. On a white pine, it's more gray. It has these deep furrows in it. And you can see where there's sap that's leaking out of the different knots here. We got some of this white sap that's still oozing out in different places. You can tell that that sap coming out here. But this bark has really rough, deep furrows or grooves in it, okay? Whereas a red pine right over here 
is more smooth. And you can see a red pine actually has a reddish color to the bark. It really has a red color to the bark without getting into all the needles and everything on a red pine. I'm just showing you some characteristic differences. So a bark characteristic. Red pine's red. White pine is more of a dark gray color. Very different texture on the bark itself. Um, kind of like your skin that has really rough skin, like a, like a rhinoceros or an elephant. Whereas the other trees have very smooth skin, okay? Very smooth skin. Um, kind of like an apple it has a, a thin, smooth skin. So just like characteristics with people, Brothers may look similar. Unless you're identical, you're not exactly the same. You have your own characteristics, the what makes you you. Trees are the same thing. They have characteristics that sets them apart from other, other trees. So the trick is to learn and figure out how to identify those characteristics. Um, in the meantime, use your guidebooks and follow the dichotomous key in our Lagon link. And that will help step walk you through step by step of what type of tree it is. But remember, you've got to learn those vocabulary terms, study up on that and uh, go from there. But good luck identifying trees and I recommend always starting with the white pine because that's our Michigan State tree. We're talking about trees and it's just showed you how to identify some white pines, give you some characteristics on the white pines, but I just wanted to give you some information about this beautiful area here behind me that you can see at Lagan Outdoor Center. Talking about the pine trees, it'd uh, be a big mistake not to mention the effort that the Lagan family who owned this land and donated it to the Genesee Intermediate School District, they made, took a huge undertaking on as a family by planting over 30,000 pine trees on this land. Red pines and white pines. Um, there was a lot of uh, farmland here on this property when the Lagans owned it and they, they took it upon themselves to bring the forest back to health. And they started with planting over 30,000 white and red pines. And as you can see, this forest behind us is a good example of a lot of their efforts. There's a lot of rows here that you can tell that these trees didn't magically grow in such a straight row. Um, those were planted specifically in those spots. And this forest here, the pine forests at Lagan now are rage and age between 50 to 80 years old uh, when the Lagans own this land and we're planting them. So they're not all the same rage. They have a little variety to them, but uh, must have taken a long time to plant that many pine trees. So if you get a chance this summer and you're looking for something to do, ask your mom and dad or your brother or sister, aunt or uncle, grandma, or grandpa, somebody, see if they got a shovel laying around and if they'll take you and buy you a tree so you can plant it out in the yard somewhere. So. See if you can do that, it's a good project for you this summer. Okay guys, good luck identifying those trees, whether it's in your backyard, down the sidewalk at the city park, be safe out there, use your resources, and see what kind of trees that you can learn how to identify too.